uh, short introduction of myself. Uh, my name is Wei. Uh, I'm currently working as a software architect at uh, Shiblue, and uh, I joined the Apache Cloud community in 2012. 12 years ago, and uh, I became a committer in 2013, and a PMC member in 2017. I'm also a member of Kubernetes, so I'm one of the uh, maintainers of CloudStack Kubernetes provider and the Cluster API provider for CloudStack. Uh, I'm also a member of OpenSDN.io uh, GitHub repository. Uh, you can reach me on my uh, by my email. Uh, on GitHub. Yeah. So today I will uh, start with a short introduction of virtual networking in CloudStack and then followed by what is VNF and why VNF, uh, some use cases of VNF, and then uh, VNF integration in CloudStack and work, uh, how to work with VNF template and uh, how to deploy VNF appliance in CloudStack. And at the end, a uh, summary of future work. So I think uh, most of us, well, almost all of us are cloud users. Mm, so this one, this part can be much simple. Yeah. In cloud stack, uh, there are three network types, uh, shared network, isolated network, and the uh, R2 network. Uh, in the left side, uh, it's, uh, it, it displays how the shared network works. So all the VMs are uh, collected to the gateway directly. And uh, for the network, there is a virtual router, which is not the gateway. And uh, on the right side is uh, isolated networks. So all the, all the VMs uh, collect to the public internet through the virtual router. So virtual router acts as the gateway of the network. And uh, in the middle, there is a concept named uh, VPC, which is a group of uh, VPC tiers, which is same as the isolated networks. Yeah. Uh, all the VPC tiers uh, sh uh, share the same uh, virtual router, so they have the same uh, outbound public IP. Uh, there are several isolation methods in CloudStack, uh, which refer to different uh, implementation in the backend. Uh, for example, VLAN and VXLAN, uh, it means the backend use uh, Nilix Bridge. And the GRE means the uh, open switch is uh, used on KVM host. Uh, there are some other uh, SDN methods for SDN, SDN solutions. For example, NSX, it means uh, VMware NSX, and the TF, it means uh, tungsten fabric. So, uh, you may have noticed that uh, for the networks, there is a classic virtual router running. And uh, it, uh, the cluster virtual router is a special virtual machine instance, and uh, it provides some network functions. Uh, for example, in shared networks and isolated networks, uh, it's the DHCP server, DNS server, and also the user data server. And uh, for the uh, isolated networks, it uh, also act as a gateway, so it provides more network functions. For example, the source net, the destination net, and uh, uh, it also supports firewall ACL, uh, node balancing, and port forwarding, and also uh, R2TP uh, VPN is also uh, possible. Yeah. Uh, it just works. Uh, we, uh, the classical virtual router has uh, been uh, developed for uh, more than 15 years, and uh, it's, a, it's very, very stable. Uh, in the past year, I think we have, we only fixed, I think, probably one, one or three bugs, uh, and I think most of the users are happy with it. Uh, it's created automatically, and it's configured automatically. Uh, of course, we have to admit that there are some drawbacks. It's not, uh, it's not, a, it works, but it's not uh, perfect. Uh, for example, uh, it's, uh, it's tiny coupled with the cloud stack. Uh, the the virtual, uh, virtual router created from a Debian 12 system template, and uh, the users have low access to log into the uh, virtual router to do some uh, to to configure the virtual router manually. And there's no command line, no web UI, and no API. Uh, and uh, some features are not supported. For example, uh, the uh, dynamic routine, uh, it is in progress, and it will be available in the upcoming Fallout 20. 
And also, open VPN is not supported. Uh, there's no security rules in in the in the VR. And also, the performance is uh, is limited you know, because it's uh, it's actually created from a Debian uh, system. Yeah. So uh, we are looking for alternatives of cloud VR for many years. And uh, the first option is uh, SDN, Software Defined Networking. Uh, the, uh, cloud, sub, cloud stack supports uh, several uh, network plugins. Uh, and uh, recently, uh, we have uh, introduced the Tungsten Fabric in cloud stack 4.18. Uh, we are also working uh, on VMware NSX, which will be supported in Cloud 20 as well. So probably in September, it will be available. And uh, yeah, uh, my colleague Alex will give a talk uh, after after this one and uh, to talk about the SDN options in in Cloud Stack. So please sit here if you are interested. In it. And the last option is VNF. Uh, what is VNF? Uh, VNF uh, is uh, well, virtualized network functions, and uh, that's, that's the definition of VNF. Uh, so it uh, runs some software application uh, which implement network functions, and uh, normally it runs as a virtual machine on top of hypervisors. This is why it calls virtualized. Uh, it's normally uh, used to replace the physical network devices and they reduce the, the cost. Uh, as you can see, actually, cloud stack uh, virtual router is, uh, is a VNF appliance. But uh, to be honest, uh, I think uh, VR is uh, this uh, concept was introduced before uh, VNF. So we do not use VNF, we use VR. You, know. uh, you may have also heard another word named NFV, which probably you are confused uh, with it. And uh, it's a, a network, it refers to network function virtualization. So it's, it's uh, actually an uh, architecture to manage VNF images and uh, instance or appliance. Yeah. Uh, what network function can be virtualized? A lot, as, uh, well, as you can imagine, everything. Almost yeah. so gateway and uh, source net, DNet, uh, firewall, node balancer, port forwarding, VPN, and uh, uh, tunneling, security, uh, something like internet, internet acceleration, and the transparent proxy, yeah, and so on. Uh, we can get the VNF, uh, VNF images uh, from uh, different. Uh, Different source, uh, for example, from the service provider from Cisco or, or other uh, hardware providers, and uh, from the hypervisor marketplace from cloud providers, and uh, there are also some public images from uh, some organization, for example, uh, ESTI OSM, and of course we can build our own VNF images. So next, uh, the images which are provided by Cisco. And uh, what, to provide uh, some some routers, virtual routers, yeah. And uh, this is the VM, VMware market, marketplace. Uh, they have also provided a lot of options uh, to act as the to to, sub, to provide different network functions. This is uh, uh, Google Cloud and uh, Microsoft Azure uh, marketplace. So some use cases. Uh, for example, uh, uh, HPE uh, Aruba has uh, uh, provides uh, some div uh, some products to collect uh, the data center and the office and the mobile and the public cloud. So they have uh, for the data center, office, and the public cloud, they have uh, some different uh, uh, hardware. But uh, for public cloud, they provide a, a image. So it's. Uh, of course, it's not possible to plug the hardware into public cloud providers, but uh, for image, yes, they can. You can uh, create a registered image in, in the public cloud and deploy instance from image, and that is the VNF. Sorry. And the uh, last uh, use case, uh, we have uh, uh, two classic VPC in different location. 
And then uh, if we want to, uh, we try to uh, sync the dates from one location to another location, uh, we have, the data has to be transferred between two VPC VRs and it will uh, take a lot of time and uh, the latency will be very, very big. But uh, with uh, the steer collect flex VPN, uh, VNF, and uh, we can uh, accelerate the process you know, from several seconds to uh, some milliseconds. You know, it's very, very fast. You know. And uh, this is VNF. Another uh, use case is, uh, well, we have a v uh, cloud stack uh, VPC, which uh, contains several tiers. For example, one uh, is a menu server, another one is uh, is none, another one is DMZ. And uh, well, we use classic VR as the gateway of the VPC tiers. And uh, we can also, re uh, we are uh, looking for some alternatives of the VPC VR. And uh, for example, we can use PFSense uh, instead of the VPC VR. And I will use this one as an example how to how to uh, how to uh, how to support a VNF? Yeah. This is a v, uh, VNF. Okay. Uh, VNF integration uh, is uh, supported in Classic 4.19. Uh, we uh, have introduced uh, uh, two terminologies. One is VNF appliance, which refers to the virtual instance, uh, which provides the network functions. And uh, another one is a VNF template or VNF image. Uh, is uh, it is the base image of uh, a VNF appliance. So uh, initially, the VNF uh, appliance is configured uh, uh, as the same as uh, the uh, VNF template. Yeah. Uh, we support uh, some uh, options. Uh, for example, create, need, update, and delete of the VNF template and also the VNF appliance. Uh, we, uh, other than that, we also, uh, uh, cloud stack will also, uh, automatically, uh, add some, some rules for the management interface of VNF appliance. So, uh, we can, uh, access the VNF appliance without any manual intervention. And uh, this access information will deploy on, on, in the cloud stack, uh, cloud stack API response and also the UI. Uh, how to, uh, well, if we do not uh, get the VNF, uh, VNF image from, from the vendors and we can build our own, uh, VNF image, uh, as a first step, we can choose a root OS. There are several options. Uh, for example, PFSense, OpenSense, or, or Mikrotik, or, or we can even use some Linux distributions as a, uh, VNF image. Yeah. Uh, uh, steps. So first one, we raise the uh, ISO and then deploy VM and then configure some services in, in the VM and then create template from VM and then templates ready uh, for, for uh, VNF appliance deployment. And uh, uh, I have written a blog post to, uh, uh, to explain how to uh, create a VNF image uh, from PFSense ISO step by step. So if you are interested, you can uh, well, refer to the to the to my uh, blog post. So when we register the VNF template, we choose the template type uh, as a VNF, and uh, of course, if uh, the template has uh, has been registered uh, with the wrong uh, template type, we can change it to to VNF. And uh, when it's done, uh, we can res uh, configure the VNF template uh, by adding some uh, some nicks and also some access details. Uh, for example, uh, this one, the PFSense uh, template, uh, I mark the first one as the as the uh, public interface, and also the manage it will, will also be uh, act as the public interface. Uh, for VNF details, we can uh, step specify the access details and also uh, some 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 other uh, configurations like uh, uh, password, uh, you, uh, the username, and also the path port of the uh, ATP or ATP server. Yeah. Okay, that's the example of the VNF configurations. 
So the, the template has uh, the VNF template has three NICs, one for public and uh, the other two for uh, uh, for guest networks, and uh, it also uh, has some details about the you know, ATP port, ATPS port, and the password username. So now, when the VNF image is ready, uh, we can deploy a, a plan. Mm, uh, we in class that we have uh, at a new wizard to deploy VNF uh, appliance, which is much simple. So just the Synex uh, template and the Synex the networks. Uh, I have created two, uh, three networks. Uh, so one uh, R, uh, two R2 networks act uh, uh, used for guest VMs, and uh, the last one uh, ISO 80 networks uh, will be the. Uh, public network of the VNF images. Uh, in the mapping, we specify which one is the uh, uh, public interface and uh, which one is uh, the first guest network and which one is the, the second guest network. Guest network. Uh, there is an option to configure firewall uh, and the port forwarding rules for VNF's uh, management interface. So. Uh, if we if this is checked, then we can access the VNF uh, uh, management interface uh, automatically without any uh, manual configuration. So, what are the rules uh, will be applied uh, for ISO NIT networks? Uh, if the management network is ISO NIT networks, it will get a public IP and uh, e enable a static net and create some firewall rules for the uh, access method. Uh, for the shared networks with security group, uh, Cloud will automatically create a new security group and uh, add some rules. Uh, or for other types, there's no rules will be uh, uh, no rules will be applied. Uh, in advanced mode, uh, well, root admin can choose the cluster port and the host of the VNF appliance, and uh, regular users can choose the the type, the user date. SSK pairs, and uh, even affinity groups. So if there are multiple PFSNs, you can uh, work uh, in active uh, primary and backup mode. And uh, you can also uh, specify some uh, other settings. Yeah. So this is the example. Yeah. When the VNF uh, plans is uh, created and running. Uh, the access information will be deployed, uh, will, be, will be displayed on the uh, on the UI in the response. Yeah. If we look at the details of the VNF plans, uh, yeah, the access information also dis displayed. If we click, uh, check the fail rules. So it uh, has uh, the fail rules for the HPS, SSH, and the HTTP. This is what we have configured in the VNF details. Click the uh, public IP of the VNF appliance. It will open the PFSense uh, management interface. So now it's time to verify the, the, the setup. Uh, I uh, created an in, uh, instance on uh, each of the two earth networks. And uh, then check the network collect, uh, collectivity uh, between the VMs, and also check the collectivity uh, from the VM to the internet. Uh, this output of some uh, pin commands uh, in the in the, uh, uh, the first uh, two commands. Uh, it shows that uh, the VMs can uh, can reach each other. Uh, it uh, gets the IP automatically from the PFSense. And uh, uh, they can uh, reach each other. And uh, the uh, second, uh, uh, next uh, two commands, uh, it shows that the uh, the VMs can uh, reach the internet, yeah, yeah, Google DNS. So let's see the basically uh, what I'm going to uh, to show and uh, in summary. Uh, we support the some operations of VNF template and images. And uh, now let's compare the two um, solutions. Uh, one in left side we use uh, class VPC, and the right side we use PFSense instead of class VR. And uh, this setup are very similar. And uh, let's compare the 
functionalities. So on left side, we use VPC. And uh, in VPC, we have some restrictions that uh, the water VPC tiers must be in the same parent state. But uh, for PFSense solution, it's not uh, uh, and it, we do not uh, have such restriction, so all the CDOs can be in different, uh, uh, different parent CDO. Yeah, it's more flexible. And uh, uh, in VPC, uh, existing networks cannot be added to the VPC, but uh, uh, for the PFSense, we can add multiple networks. Uh, we can attach the VNF appliance to to multiple networks, and it just works. And uh, for the wish for the feature, uh, most uh, uh, most the features supported by uh, VPC are also supported by uh, PFSense. No. And uh, well, actually, the PFSense solution has uh, more features. For example, Open VPN and the static routes, and also virtual IP DNS, dynamic DNS, dynamic routing, uh, BGP, OSPF, which are not supported by uh, uh, our classic VR. But uh, the problem is that uh, the class of VR can be created and configured automatically. And uh, for the PFSense solution, the user has to pre-config the uh, VNF template, the services in PF, uh, VNF template, or they have to config the services after the VNF appliance is created. So our next step uh, uh, currently, is first uh, is still in the first stage of VNF integration uh, uh, in Cloud Stack. Uh, our final goal is to allow users to use the VNF appliance with very little manual intervention to do it. So, so ideally, all the uh, v services in the VNF appliance will be configured automatically, same as what we. Uh, Currently, do on uh, Cloud VR, and uh, and uh, uh, our, idea, our idea is to uh, add a new uh, plugin framework for WinF, and uh, it will support classic virtual router, and also PFSense uh, users can also uh, um, uh, have their own implementation and uh, uh, bring the implementation to the community. It's also possible. Uh, there are of course some challenges yeah, because uh, the router OS have different. Uh, yeah, different uh, access methods. Yeah, for example, some some uh, some root OS uh, are managed by SSH. Well, some has OP, uh, very good API, uh, and some uh, PF, uh, some root OS can be accessed by socket Unix socket. And for the data model, well, it can be the some uh, argument of uh, uh, shared commands or, or API parameters or or it can be JSON or XML. Yeah. So it's, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's actually a big challenge. You know, and also uh, upgrade can be a problem. You know. So uh, that's it. Yeah. Uh, Class the collaboration, collaboration conference will be held in Madrid in this November. Yeah. So that's it for me. Any questions?